Hi guys, design time today again, and of course high voltage time again. As I said in a few videos, in a short video I made some time ago, I was playing with some uh, helium neon laser tubes. I was playing with the power supply, making arcs, and of course the power supply died. And I had two options, either to get another power supply or the much more interesting option to build a power supply, to design and build a power supply. And this is what this video is about. The build of a power supply for helium neon laser tubes. And the idea was, how can I use things I have to make this power supply? And some of these things that I have are these here. The DC-DC converter, that I will show you what I use that for, or what I use the, uh, the components of this PCB for. And this is a Royer converter, inverter, high voltage inverter, CCFL converter, that goes from 12 volt to 2000 volt AC. The most difficult part of every power supply is the transformer. Not, not difficult to, to, to just to calculate. This is one difficulty or one of the difficulties. But to get it, and to be honest, I have no interest on winding transformers, transformers with a few thousand uh, turns on the secondary. So. My approach is always on transformers to use as much as possible what I have ready, available, or that I, that I can order. That's why I do not have to do it by myself. And this was the idea for this power supply too. So I used this CCFL transformer as the main transformer for the high voltage. And the idea was to get it as cheap as possible. So, for example, this whole CCFL PCB, this inverter, this Royer inverter, where I will use all the parts mostly, mostly all the parts, costs a half a euro. Yes, guys, a half a euro. And this will be the back converter that supplies the Royer converter on the primary side. And this costs me under one dollar. So I have already a lot of the parts and the most important part, this transformer, for one and a half euro, not even. For this design, of course, I made a PCB that is made to withstand almost 10 kilovolts. And you will see what I mean. The sponsor of this video is PCB Way, the sponsor of these PCBs. I already opened the package. Here you see a glimpse of the PCB. And this is how the PCB looks. A very nice, very clean PCB. Quality from PCB Way is always exceptional. They are fast, reliable. And you will see, you see what I mean. It is a high voltage PCB. There is a lot of millings, a lot of creepage distances, a lot of distances of everything. Here is the high voltage part. On the bottom is the on the left side the Royer oscillator. This thing here you see the 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 parts I'm using from that PCB for my design. And here is the back regulator part that controls or that supplies the Royer oscillator. Here's the back and this is what I'm using. I will put in a small heatsink on the simple switcher LM2956, I think, yeah. There is, there are a lot of options on this design. You see here, I don't know if you can see it, 
let's try to zoom there are a lot of bridges there are a lot of but you can set the fee the features one of the feature is that you can use the regulation for example let's just do it like that see if it you can see the regulation either the regulation is the bug is regulated by using his output voltage or the bug is regulated by using the high voltage of the doubler of the optional doubler here with high voltage uh, resistor dividers back to the feedback of the of the switcher it depends what you want to do i, I try to keep the this power supply this high voltage power supply as universal as possible that means you can use it as a doubler the the the, uh, the main voltage just a little uh, explanation how this thing works uh, the laser the, the, the laser tube to get ignited it needs a, a voltage between eight six and ten thousand volts depending on the on the length and on the uh, on the brand of the laser tube if this thing ignites it need it needs a sustained voltage between again six volt 600 and 2000 volts many of these power supplies use for the ignition voltage a trigger transformer that just puts a, a pulse of 10 kilovolts turns it on and then uh, only the sustained voltage is supplied here i'm using a different technique different design there is no trigger transformer there are a lot of stages here as you can see these are the stages mostly in use for the trigger voltage the sustain voltage is, is 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 from here that it is either a single rectification of the 2000 volts or a dual recti or, or a doubler depending how you how you populate this board when you connect of course there is a there's a resistor limiter here and another one near the the tube itself when you connect the high voltage on the on the tube itself the tube will see the triggering voltage of 10 kilovolts but this voltage is limited with a quite high ohmic resistance between one mega ohm and six mega ohm here depending on what the current will be that you allow this can be changed for a capacitor too but again you can use it so or so at the moment the tube is is turned on triggers it draws too much current and this 10 kilovolts break down and the only thing is the base fed sustained voltage from this side of this either, either single rectification or doubler filtered minus the voltages the forward voltages of this of these diodes this is what the uh, what the tube will see and this is how you keep the sustained voltage no trigger transformer necessary it is a very simple design it works reliable and of course we will check it when it's done when i populated it we calibrate the output voltages on this pcb is an output for a meter for a multimeter that is multiplied so you can see the voltage multiplied by a thousand i think or by hundred but i will show it to you when it's when it when it's finished meanwhile do not forget please to visit pcbway's website pcbway does not only provide pcbs 
from your Gerbers that you sent them. It has the ability for CNC machining, 3D printing, populating your PCBs, and all of that in an exceptional quality. In between now, a short explanation on how built this thing. Here's the input voltage, the barrel connector with the input voltage. Here you have the back converter that supplies the Royer oscillator itself. The cascade circuit, high voltage circuit with configurable output stages. You can you don't have to use all the stages. You have you, you populate just what you need in dependence on what the what voltage you what trigger voltage you need. This is the base fate of the sustain voltage is get generated here that can be it's directly from the output of the transformer, either a single rectification or a doubler. We have a filtering here to clean a little bit the voltage. And this is fed directly to the base of the Cockroft Walton multiplier. But via this capacitor and this high voltage dial, uh, high voltage resistor, the trigger voltage is fed, it is multiplied, and when that when the tube is triggered and starts drawing current, this current is limited from this resistor that is has a very low current. This the high voltage breaks down and only the base fed volt base fed voltage goes through them through the multiplier like that. This is why I said the output fed voltage, the output voltage, when it is triggered, the tube is triggered, is this voltage minus the, the series VFs of this high voltage diodes, more or less. Further down, we have the high voltage divider for the, for the, uh, the high voltage divider for the, for the meter where you can connect the meter here. And again, further down from the base fade voltage, you have the divider. If you use it as a feedback for the buck converter, so you can use either the divided voltage, the high voltage from the base fed always, not the complete output voltage, but the base fed voltage, divided down with this voltage divider, this trimmer potentiometer or potentiometer that you put on, 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 on your casing and you fed it to the uh, feedback of the, of the switcher. This is how I had it from the beginning. And then I saw that there are, there are, there are uh, sometimes I would need it differently and I do not want the feedback, a big feedback loop like that. I want a small feedback loop to just control what I'm, what I'm feeding the Royer oscillator itself. So you can use this thing as a high voltage power supply to if you change this resistor here. So this thing is quite versatile. So this is a quick example or a quick explanation on how it's how this thing is working. Uh, if you like my videos and you if you like what you see, please. Press the like button and subscribe. This helps me to show you more of this stuff and to show you more of my designs. On the table, on the bench, all the parts I'm going to use for this power supply. The parts of the Royer oscillator that I'm going to use, the parts of the back converter that I'm going to use additional parts here for the dividers and with high voltage resistors. It's that's a 10 kilovolt resistor. That's a three and a half kilovolt resistor, special high voltage resistors. 
the stage capacitors themselves, 470 pico, 6, 6 kilovolts for the Cockroft Walton multiplier, the single rectification or doubler and filtering capacitors, 10 nanofarad, 6 kilovolts, and the high voltage diodes themselves, 15 kilovolt diodes at 5 milliamps. 10 or 5 milliamps, I think. This video is already going, is getting a little bit too long. Uh, I will split it in two videos. The second part will be the, the build of this PCB, the population of this PCB port, the testing, the, uh, and the fine tuning. For now, thank you for watching. Please consider if you like my videos, to subscribe and press the like button. And please don't forget to visit PCB Way. That is the sponsor of these PCBs you see here. Cheers, guys. Till the next part. Bye.